Hello, it's you, not Alicia here, and welcome back to my channel. It is Tutorial Tuesday. So, last week I showed you guys how to single crochet flat and in the round, and now this week I'm going to show you how to knit flat and in the round. Like I said before in my other videos, be sure to check out my other videos so you kind of know what I'm referencing to whenever I do mention a previous video that I've made. I'm just going to go ahead and get started. So what you will need is yarn of your choice. Today we're just going to make a swatch just so that you can get the hang of knitting flat and knitting in the round. So you don't need um, any, a specific yarn, just whatever you want to use at the moment. You need needles to match the yarn. So this is worsted weight yarn and I'm just using a size six just for today. You'll also need a tapestry needle. Make sure it has the eye at one point and you'll need a stitch marker and of course some scissors. So, I'm going to move these to the side and go ahead and get started. Whenever I cast on I like to cast on the long tail method. So in order to do this, I pull a good amount of yarn. So what you can always do as a beginner, you can say you wanted to cast on 20 stitches. So what you would do is you would take the tail end, your needle, and you would wrap your needle 10 times, so half of whatever amount of stitches that you want. So, so you would wrap it half, right? You would hold your hand and then you would pull those stitches off. You will then form a loop, put it together, and then at the end, wherever that tail is, is it right here? You will catch this and then this should be enough to cast on 20 stitches. So that's what you would do in order to get how much tail that you would need. So I'll just go ahead and use this just, like I said, it's just for demonstrating purposes. So I will go ahead and use this amount. So now you want your working yarn on the left hand side, your tail on the right hand side. What you can do is you can create a slip knot like I showed you in single crochet in my last uh, video. But what I like to do is I like to just go ahead and stick my uh, needle over my yarn. And I, ca I consider this as one. So then I take the working yarn and I put it over my thumb like this. I'll wrap it over my thumb and then I take the tail and I wrap it over my pointer. I like to hold the ends with my other fingers and I just go like that. So now I'm ready to cast on 20 stitches. So what I do is I take my needle and I wrap it under my thumb under just this first loop under my thumb and then I go over this first loop and I bring it in and pull tight. So that should be two. Now let me zoom in so that this is clear for you guys to see. What I do, I wrap my needle over my thumb. Okay, just go into that that loop right here, this, this strand of yarn. Just go under, I said over, but go under this one, right? So you went under this one. Then you have your pointer. Because remember I said hold it with your pointer? Then you're going to go under from the opposite end and pull through. So to show you again, we've already casted on three stitches, as you can see. To show you again, we go under from the left-hand side. This is, this is my left right here, left, right, left, 
right under through the left hand side and then this is my right left right left under through the right hand side and pull straight through so now we cast it on four stitches so again holding the yarn you go under through the left hand side of your thumb under the right hand side on your pointer and you see how I'm letting this fall off my thumb and I'm point and I'm pushing this up and then you just pull tight so now we did two four five so with our five stitches, we're gonna cast. I'm gonna cast on one more with you, and then I want you to go up to the number that you want to do. For this demonstration purposes, I'm going to 20. But like I said, um, you can go to whatever number that you feel will get you comfortable in doing the knit stitch and help you with casting on. So under and over six. And this is 20. So with 20 stitches, now I'm using a needle or yeah, needles that has a loop. Some that has a loop. Some needles are just straight with no point. For this, for this demonstration purpose, that is fine if you just have straight needles instead of circular needles. The reason why I'm using circular needles is because after I finish showing you this in flat, I will show you how to do it in the round. So if you have a pair of knitting needles that's straight or it doesn't look like mine, that is quite okay. We're still going to do the same technique as I'm showing you now. So we just cast it on 20 stitches or however many stitches you decided to cast on. Then if you're using straight needles, you're going to take your other needle. Also, if you're using circular needles, you're just going to go follow it around to the other needle. And then you turn your work. So we worked like this casting on. Then you just turn your work clockwise. So now you're ready to begin. You're going to have two strands coming from your work. And you need to determine which one is your tail and then which one is coming from the skein of yarn or the ball of yarn depending on how you um, have your yarn. You want to use the one obviously that's coming from the skein because if you use your tail you're not going to have much to go off of. I like to use both strands to kind of work my tail inside my work and, this, and then just knit the end of the tail once I can't use my tail anymore. So you can do that as well or just pick up the strand that's coming from the ball that's coming from the ball and let's be so with your other needle you're going to knit you are going to stick your needle your right hand your right hand needle counterclockwise so through the left side and just push it straight through you see how it's in there okay then you're going to take your yarn like I said I'm using both you can use one if you want but make sure it's coming from your ball of work ball of yarn you're going to take your yarn and you're going to wrap counterclockwise okay so this is how it should look then with your right hand needle you're going to push your needle through bringing up a loop you still have a loop here on your left hand side that you just went into you're going to push that off and then now you have one stitch so you just made the knit stitch so let's do that again stick your needle through the left hand side and push straight back alright you can push straight back all you did all I did 
was I put my needle through and it went straight back. Okay. Then wrap your yarn counterclockwise around this right hand needle and then pull your needle through that loop and push that loop off. So now we just did two. So then we're going to go all, we're going to do the same thing all the way down until we get to our last stitch. And like I said, the reason why my loops look a little bigger than yours if you're not using both strand is because I'm using both strand of yarn. So now I feel like I've worked my tail enough where I can just nip this off. So now I'm just picking up the tail that goes to my ball and I'm using that one. So just stick your needle through, yarn over that needle and push it through that loop. And you just keep doing that all the way across your work. Knitting is very easy, um, I guess, for beginners compared to crocheting because you only have two stitches to remember, knitting, knit stitch and the purl stitch. If you can do the knit stitch and the purl stitch, then you can basically knit because the pattern that you read any knitting pattern are all going to involve those stitches. Now of course there's always like knit two together, knit front and back and I will show you guys those you know as these series go along but knitting and purling is is very easy and if you get that concept then you're a pro already. So all I'm doing is knitting to the end and as a beginner, I always encourage you to go back and count your stitches. You want to make sure that you start you left off with what you started with. So just go back and count like I that you have 20 stitches, 25 stitches, however many you cast it on because that's what you want to work with throughout the whole time unless you are decreasing. So, now what I did was I just came to the end of my last stitch. All I do is I switch hands and I get my other working needle. Now this needle was full of stitches, now it's empty. So now I get this needle and I just do the same thing. And so all I do is I stick my needle through, yarn over, pull through and off my needle. And that is knitting. And you just knit. and knit all the way across. Now, there's different textures of knitting and purling. So what we're doing, being that we're just knitting, we're going to get what you call the garter stitch. And the garter stitch are going to have these little bumps that you'll see, but we didn't do any purling. So normally with purling, you'll see bumps. But because we're working this flat, we're not going to see stockinette stitch which is just knitting we're going to see the garter stitch so when, while we're working this flat this texture right here is called the garter stitch now when I work it when I show you how to knit in the round that will be just knit stitch because we're never turning our work we're just going around and around in a circle, obviously, because we're working in the round. So we're never turning our work, so that will be a knit stitch. And that will be stockinette. If, I, if you wanted to do stockinette flat, you would knit one side and then purl the next side. Knit one side, purl the next side. But because of this tutorial, all we're doing is knitting, so we're gonna get that garter stitch working flat. So we just completed a second row and so all you do is you just switch hands 
and knit again. So I'm going to knit for five more rows or until I feel like it's enough um, work so that you can actually see the garter stitch better. I'm going to keep knitting and then I will let you know how many rows I did just in case you cast it on 20 and you're following along with me so that you can get the same um, so yours can look the same as mine. I'll let you know how many rows I did and then I will show you guys how to bind off. So keep knitting. Um, if you feel comfortable, keep knitting, keep going, and I will see you guys back once I've reached a good amount of work. So this is a total of 12 rows and I am approaching the end. And I feel like this is enough for you to see the texture I was talking about earlier regarding the garter stitch. It's very pretty. I use the garter stitch a lot for scarves when I'm um, knitting scarves straight instead of knitting circular scarves or infinity scarves. When I knit, um, even when you do knit infinity scarves, you can still give it this texture. But again, if you're knitting in the round, you just have to do something extra versus if you're knitting flat, you can just keep knitting, knitting. Um, so I like this texture mostly for scarves or sometimes like a hat border. That'll be cute for a hat border. You know, maybe even dishcloths. I always use this type of uh, pattern. So it just always depends on what you like and what you want to do with it. But this is the garter stitch. And we just knit it across each row. Every time we turned our work, we just knit, 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 and this is how we got the garter stitch. So now I'm going to show you how to bind off. So if you was to pull this needle out, your work will come undone because you haven't secured any of this sti these stitches that's on the needle. Like I had mentioned in my previous tutorial video that with crocheting, you don't really have to bind off because as you work your your stitches for crochet, you are binding off essentially as you go. But with knitting, you're not. So whatever you cast on, that's what you start with unless you start decreasing or binding off whenever you're finished. So we reached the end. Now we do the same thing by alternating hands. And to bind off, it's very easy. Um, you're still knitting so what you're going to do is you're going to knit the first stitch and you should be now um, aware of how to do that then you knit the second stitch so that first stitch that you knit you're going to take that stitch and pull it over that second stitch leaving one loop on the hook or on the needle excuse me then you go into the next stitch and you knit that stitch and then now you take that stitch coming from the end of the needle and you're gonna pass it over that stitch you just made and I think I just split my yarn so give me a minute yeah I did all right so you're going to take this stitch and you're going to pass it over the stitch you created and now you're ready to go. Knit the next stitch, then take this stitch, pass it over, knit the next stitch, take that stitch, pass it over, and then you just keep doing that until you reach your last stitch stitch and this is how you bind off and as you go you can see that it creates this knit look and you're closing your work okay
Now that I reached my last stitch, you just pull it up to create a loop. You see how we closed our work? And so what you would do is you would cut your yarn, pull it through that loop and weave it in. And I've shown you guys how to do that in my previous video of my previous tutorial video. But that essentially is how you knit flat. And this is the garter stitch that we created. So now I will show you guys how to knit in the round. <laughs> 